Dream Chaser might die. Once hailed as the future of American spaceflight and a promising alternative to Boeing's troubled Starliner, the Dream Chaser spaceplane now seems to be facing a similar fate. After years of delays, NASA's patience appears to be running out. While Starliner got multiple second chances, it looks like Dream Chaser won't be as fortunate. Reports suggest that NASA is pulling the plug on its contract with Sierra Space altogether. So why is NASA being so tough on Dream Chaser, even though it showed so much promise? Could this really be the end of one of the coolest space planes ever designed? Let's dive into all the details in today's Tech Map episode. It's easy to understand why the space community once adored Sierra Space's Dream Chaser. When it was first introduced, the vehicle seemed like a bridge between the Space Shuttle's legacy and a new era of reusable commercial spacecraft. Dream Chaser was designed as an autonomous reusable space plane that could launch vertically atop a rocket and land horizontally on any standard runway. The appeal was obvious quick access to cargo after landing shorter turnaround times between missions and no need for complex ocean recoveries like those required for capsules. For many, Dream Chaser represented the elegant future of space travel. The origins of Dream Chaser trace back to NASA's HL-20 concept from the 1990s, a lifting body design meant for crew transport to low Earth orbit. In the early 2000s, the idea was revived with the hope of turning NASA's concept into a real operational vehicle. After falling into the hands of Sierra Nevada Corporation, this project was proposed for the commercial crew program and even received some seed money from NASA under the commercial crew development program, phases one and two, as well as the commercial crew integrated capability phase. Each stage brought Dream Chaser closer to flight readiness. But when NASA made its final selection in 2014, Dream Chaser lost out to SpaceX's Crew Dragon and Boeing's Starliner. The decision wasn't just about money, it reflected maturity and risk. Capsules like Dragon and Starliner had simpler proven designs, while Dream Chaser's winged concept, though innovative, still needed extensive development. Still, Sierra Nevada didn't walk away empty-handed. The company was later selected for NASA's Commercial Resupply Services II contract, which guaranteed a minimum of seven cargo flights to the ISS. Unlike the crew version, this cargo variant wouldn't carry astronauts, but it kept the dream alive. At the time, optimism ran high. In 2017, Sierra Space successfully conducted an approach and landing test using an engineering prototype proving that the space plane could glide and land safely on a runway. The test fueled excitement about a future where sleek commercial space planes might routinely ferry supplies between Earth and orbit. However, aerospace history is full of ambitious vehicles slowed by real-world challenges. Dream Chaser's first cargo mission, originally planned for 2021, was delayed year after year moving to 2022, 2023, 2024, and then 2025. The delays hinted at deep technical and logistical problems. When the first flight-ready vehicle, Dream Chaser Tenacity, arrived at Kennedy Space Center in May 2024, hopes rose again for an imminent launch. But then came silence. At press events, NASA gave few details about the schedule, and rumors began circulating about certification issues. By September 2025, NASA confirmed that the agency was removing its obligation for seven guaranteed flights, stating it was no longer obligated for a specific number of resupply missions. The decision was part of a mutual contract amendment, but was widely viewed as a major setback for Sierra Space. As predicted, the problems centered on vehicle certification. NASA potentially could have been concerned that Sierra wouldn't have all the required certifications in time for a flight in the near future, especially since ISS is scheduled to be retired in 2030. In August, the National Space Agency stated that Sierra Space was in the final phase of certification, but was still stuck in two key areas, software and propulsion systems. 
NASA has demanded rigorous end-to-end -end software testing before allowing any new spacecraft to approach the ISS. Its caution was understandable. The troubled first flight of Boeing's Starliner had revealed how software flaws could jeopardize missions. Dream Chaser's propulsion system added another layer of complexity. The vehicle uses a hybrid system combining kerosene and hydrogen peroxide, a cleaner, less toxic propellant compared to hydrazine. While safer, it requires extensive testing and validation from scratch. Additional integrated safety reviews also had to be completed before flight clearance. Complicating matters further was the launch schedule for United Launch Alliance's Vulcan Centaur rocket, the vehicle tasked with carrying Dream Chaser to orbit. The Vulcan itself faced multiple delays, leaving limited windows for Sierra Space to launch. Given these challenges, NASA and Sierra Space agreed on a compromise. Instead of docking with the ISS on its first mission, Dream Chaser's debut would be a free flight demonstration. In this mission, Tenacity will launch into orbit, test its propulsion guidance re-entry and runway landing, but without connecting to the ISS. It will still operate close enough to validate its systems in realistic conditions. This approach reduces risk and gives Sierra Space time to gather valuable data. The test flight is now scheduled for no earlier than late 2026. While this change improved the margin of safety, it created serious negative impacts on Sierra itself, first of all, financial stress. The original CRS-2 contract, valued at roughly $628 million per mission, promised Sierra Space up to seven launches. The total potential value exceeded $4 billion, representing a stable income source to fund Dream Chaser's development and operations. Without these guaranteed flights, Sierra Space faces a sharp drop in expected revenue, potentially losing hundreds of millions to billions of dollars over time. The lack of predictable income could make it harder to raise investment capital or expand production. NASA's decision to provide only minimal support during the demonstration flight means Sierra Space must shoulder much of the cost itself. This increases financial risk and delays any return on years of investment. Even if Dream Chaser's free flight mission succeeds, its window for ISS operations is closing fast. The ISS is scheduled for retirement around 2030, giving only a few years for potential resupply missions. NASA's other cargo providers, SpaceX's Dragon and Northrop Grumman's Cygnus, already perform regular reliable flights. Unless NASA adds more missions, Dream Chaser may find itself competing for fewer and fewer opportunities. In essence, Dream Chaser must now prove it deserves a place in a market that no longer urgently needs it. The news of NASA scaling back its commitment sparked disappointment within the space community. Many space enthusiasts had followed Dream Chaser's progress for years, rooting for its success as a distinctive alternative to capsules. Hopefully, future NASA budgets will be prioritized to contractors who can actually deliver on time with reliable and cost-effective technology. Oh man, what a bummer I was so hoping to see Dream Chaser become an operational spacecraft. I hope SpaceX buys out Sierra, that Dream Chaser is awesome. SpaceX could finish the job. On the other hand, some expressed sympathy for the challenges Sierra Space is facing. Might also be partly due to schedule conflicts with other cargo services and the uncertainty of Dream Chaser's maiden launch date holding up resupply missions. It's not the same as needing a backup to crew access, either as with Starliner since Cargo Dragon and Cygnus are both flying. Already Dream Chaser is more nice to have. It's unfortunate though, maybe after the free flight, they can finally nail down whatever problems they have and do a proper flight to the ISS. I'm surprised so few have mentioned it, but Dream Chaser was supposed to work with the Vulcan Centaur, which saw a delay as well. I'm guessing the delay on the Vulcan had downstream effects on the schedule for Dream Chaser. 
Others point out that Sierra Space's difficulties also reflect the inherent complexity of developing a winged spacecraft. Capsule designs like Dragon are relatively simple, compact, robust, and proven. They rely on parachutes for descent and splash down safely at sea. By contrast, a space plane must survive high-speed re-entry, maintain aerodynamic stability, and land precisely on a runway. The company is expanding its focus beyond NASA contracts and the ISS. Its broader goal is to become a key player in the emerging commercial space economy, one that includes private space stations, national defense missions, and orbital logistics. At the center of that strategy is Orbital Reef, a proposed commercial space station being developed by Sierra Space Blue Origin Boeing and several partners. Designed as a mixed-use orbital hub for research manufacturing and tourism, Orbital Reef aims to host up to 10 occupants initially with room to grow. Sierra Space is responsible for providing its inflatable habitats and plans to use Dream Chaser to deliver cargo and possibly crew to the station. The project targets operational readiness between 2027 and 2030, potentially just as the ISS retires. This diversification could help Sierra Space reduce its dependence on NASA and tap into a broader market that includes commercial research, private industry, and government customers. Another key focus for Sierra Space is national security. The U.S. Space Force and Defense Innovation Unit have both shown interest in Dream Chaser's capabilities, particularly its ability to launch, quickly operate autonomously, and land on standard runways for rapid turnaround. In a statement posted on social media in September, Sierra Space emphasized this flexibility. Dream Chaser's first flight will be a free flyer demonstration mission designed to prove our technology and deliver critical data to NASA. We believe this approach will give us the flexibility to address pressing national security space challenges while continuing to advance Dream Chaser for NASA and commercial customers. The U.S. defense sector represents a lucrative opportunity. The 2025 defense budget request for the Space Force exceeds $217 billion, much of it allocated to space-based surveillance communications and logistics. Dream Chaser's reusable runway landing design could play a role in future defense and intelligence missions that require quick orbital access and retrieval. Sierra Space is already collaborating with the Defense Innovation Unit to explore using Dream Chaser's Shooting Star Cargo Module for orbital outposts and uncrewed missions. These efforts highlight the vehicle's versatility beyond ISS operations, potentially supporting national defense emergency logistics and rapid response missions in low Earth orbit.